Guys, welcome to episode six of the special entire six feet. A six feet. <laughs> All right, guys. So I know we're kind of screwing around, around a little bit. We're just trying to bring a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and some joy into everybody's lives, especially those that cannot train or worse yet, their uh, home quarantine. So let me explain to you why this comes naturally to me. First of all, I'm a germaphobe, so those of you who know me, when I come out of the shower, before that I'll roll with anybody, you can you know, sweat on me and stuff. Once I come out of the shower, I ask people to part like the Red Sea. Um, now, this five feet, six feet, this comes from about 15 years ago. Some of you may remember old school Henzo uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys, Shaheen Gafar. Shaheen goes by Shai Asis, one of the most wonderful human beings you'll ever see, you'll ever meet. Um, great guy, excellent Jiu Jitsu, very, very tough. And about 15 years ago, I think at the time he was a blue belt, but he was still at that time, even at that time, he was already dispatching black belt. So he used to mess around with people. He was always like, you know, screwing around and trying to, and I always used to say, five feet Shaheen, five feet Shaheen. So this comes very natural to me, but in all seriousness, guys, try to keep your circle of contact small. Remember, five to six feet is where the contact becomes. All right, Enrique, are you recovered? <laughs> Five feet, <laughs> five feet every day. So, guys, uh, today what we're going to do, the lesson is going to be on reverse inverted triangles and hybrids. All right? Um, again, these lessons tend to be only half an hour, so ask questions. Um, what I'm looking for is, is try to give you some setups for those so you can start working with them and think about it where you are, a lot of times when you, you might be in, in, in different positions, it's gonna be dramatically different setups. Um, one thing that I wanna point you to is, is uh, Firaz and I did a uh, triangle video, uh, which is pretty long, I mean, it's guessing 40 to 50 minutes. So again, you might be able to use the, this, this sort of class today in conjunction with Firaz Zahabi's and mine video, it's on TriStar Gym Channel and it's triangles. I think it's about two years old, but a lot of the concepts are very good and still hold to, to this day. So let's look at uh, uh, the triangle. Um, guys, triangle does not have to be a perfect triangle. It could be an ugly triangle. I call it a diamond. The point that most people sort of lose, especially at, at uh, sort of when you're starting out with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it can be used as a very strong form of control. That's what people forget. They use it only as a submission. Once they slap it on, and if they feel they're not gonna finish the guy, they start to lose confidence, and once it falls apart, they usually have their guard passed, or the, uh, the opponent takes a more dominant position. So this should not happen. What we're looking for is to use that grip, at the worst case scenario, to use it as a form of control, and if we cannot use it as a submission, we can use it as, as a tool for sweep or improving our position, okay? For example, so let's assume that I got short legs or that Enrique is 280 pounds and I just lock up the diamond. So right now Enrique can posture up without any, this is easy. But not if I start to bring my knees to my chest and squeezing my thighs. Now it becomes a decent form of control where now I have time to try to, you know, segue into a regular triangle or reverse triangle, okay? So let's look at a couple of different setups. Um, there was a question, I forget who it was from, regarding sort of how do I um, control the opponent or, you know, when, when, I'm, when I have a Kimura grip, especially, you know, how do I set up triangles off the Kimura grip? Um, I personally, will go for a Kimura grip only when I'm pretty sure that I can put the guy away with the Kimura. Uh, as far as just the grip, the Kimura grip, I don't tend to use it, and the reason for that is a lot of times, especially when I'm on top, so Enrique turtles up. And if I were to, to, to try to get a Kimura grip, both my, my hands are tied, and if Enrique rolls in an unpredictable manner, my head is gonna be hitting the, the mats first, and 
Guys, in jiu-jitsu especially, you know, if you've been training for a long time, you do want to avoid having your head hit the ground repeatedly because at, at some point this will start to, you know, have an impact on sort of your neck and, and mobility and, and eventually this will start to, you will have to back off your game. So a lot of times instead I just, I just grip arm through. So rather than two, I grip with one. My right hand is, is focused to make sure that as Enrique rolls, or depending which way he goes, my hand posts on the ground to help protect my head. I will try to, as I'm going through this, I will try to isolate his arm with my legs. All right? So right now I'm in a great position. All right? So you have a lot of options here. You can go for a choke. You can go even for a one-handed choke. Uh, my personal favorite is to switch my legs and do a bit of a hybrid triangle. It, this is not the greatest triangle in the world, but generally speaking, once I lock this up, guys, this is done. So a lot of my, my, my students that when I'm training with them, once, once I hit this, it's done. They know. We're finished. <laughs> Well, we're not finished. <laughs> he is. <laughs> so let's look at it again. All right. So he's turtled up. You know, he's protecting his, his neck. And at some point, guys, avoid the temptation. If you, you don't want to be too deep. You don't want to be elbow deep. Because if Enrique clamps down on my elbow, he can sort of roll me through. And at that point, you know, I'm going to have a hard time trying to battle in the scramble. In the scramble, it rides. So, as he's going, notice that my elbow, and I'm not elbow deep, my elbow is, is pretty shallow, okay? As he rolls, I'm looking to take away his arm. Re regardless, whatever finish you use, even if you're using it for the back finish, guys, um, I'm still looking to take his arm away. Um, you know, you have sort of a bit of an oddball arm lock here. Uh, so most jiu-jitsu guys, when they get trapped in this, they will swim their arm to the other leg. It's just self-preservation on their part. Um, just make sure when you're doing this, when you're transitioning, keep your thighs close together so you can transition to it without losing the arm. You lose the arm, go, go to town. Yeah, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, so you cannot lose the arm. So make sure you do not lose the arm, all right? I would like to take the arm before if I can, but a lot of times the guys keep it tight and just roll. So as they roll, I look for in the, in the middle of the roll. Say good night, Enrique. What did I tell you about five feet? Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, that's one setup for a, a hybrid triangle. Uh, do we have any questions on this specific setup? Yeah, so on Instagram, uh, Sandby here asked, I get to that position a lot, but some of the opponents escape sliding down. Oh, yeah. That's a very good question. Very good question. So this should not happen, and I will explain to you why, okay? So let's look at it. Guys, I'm gonna on this one, I usually try to do both sides. So I'm ambidextrous, but the reality is my game is not symmetrical. Uh, in this case, I will hit the same submission whether I'm on the left or right, but especially my guard, if, if I'm attacking on my left side, meaning my opponent's right side, I usually start everything with either a very short arm lock from split guard, or with a katana. Uh, on my right side, I will usually just start the attack with a normal five. In this case, I, I generally have a pretty symmetrical game. So you do want to try to have, you know, decent on both sides. Maybe one side is better, but you don't want to be completely an expert on one side and a complete uh, newbie on the other side. All right, but let's look at how we control with this. So, I, I tilt slightly to him. 
Notice how I'm keeping my, my legs in, engaged on the far side to make sure that he cannot escape, number one. And number two, that he cannot move. So, so there's only, literally there's one escape. And it start to slide down. I can try to stop him. But look how he slides down. He cannot, he still cannot escape because as long as his head is on my torso, he cannot escape. What he needs to do, yes, he needs to put his head basically in my armpit. This is the only way to escape if you do this properly. So right now, I hold on to his arm. All right? We talked about this, using your head. Mike, do you remember what episode that was, using your head? Maybe second. First or second, guys. So I'm controlling the arm. He cannot get it back. So he's right now, he's trapped. All right? So what I'm going to do, he, he cannot move anymore. But no, he, uh, there's a big difference between sustainable position and unsustainable position. Enrique now is in a sustainable position. He can, he can stay here and he can stall. All right? I'm not threatening him with a submission. The only time he grip on this is kind of weak, so it's not going to threaten him with a submission. So now, because he can stay here and, and sort of stall, I have to move to make his position unsustainable. So when that happens, I'm going to step over, hook his hip. I'm going to bring myself up. And immediately, guys, I'm still controlling his, his arm. I'm going to slide up and sit into an arm lock. I don't even have to bring this foot over. This is done. Okay? If I can get an underarm pick grip, even worse. Yeah. <laughs> All right? So, let's look at it again. Uh, we can do the other side now. Am I doing the other side? Yes. So, uh, let's look at it again from the other side. The most important point is, guys, if... I'm going to point out to you this. So he rolls. So right now, Enrique is in an unsustainable position, okay? Because if he stays here, he's subject to a finish, okay? So this is an unsustainable position. By him sliding down and bringing his head into my armpit, he moved from a sustainable position, unsustainable position, to sustainable position. He can just wait here unless this is MMA. <laughs> or combat jujitsu. Sorry. Five feet. <laughs> so now he can stay here without a threat of a submission. So I need to move now. So I'm going to bring my foot over to the other side. I'm going to hip heist. And as soon as I do, I pull his arm and I slide in, guys. You do not need to. Bring the other leg over. Okay? So, to recap, when he rolls, you have to control him and you have to control where he goes. All right? So, once he rolls, I put him in an unsustainable position where I threaten either the rear naked choke, collar choke or the hybrid triangle we just worked on. And if, if he doesn't move fast enough, I will impose one of those on him. Once he moves, if he tucks his head, he's kind of trapped. He basically, his arms are like this, and he's basically trapped, but right now I'm not threatening him with a submission. So I just hip heist to the top and arm lock him. So hopefully we answered that question on Instagram. Guys, just as a reminder, I think since episode three, including episode three, we're live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Can we be live on anything else? Hopefully not. Don't, don't answer that question. <laughs> so, uh, because I think the tree of devices has three of them right now. Uh, but uh, it, everything stays on my page. Everything gets posted on my Academy page. And it also stays on YouTube. So if you want to review later on or invite your friends to look at it, it's, it's on there. All right? So hopefully, do we have any other questions on this setup? Yeah, so on Facebook, Elias Sapir asked, what happens if you didn't catch his arm during the roll? Well, <laughs> I will fight the roll until I can catch his arm. That's a, that's a screw-up in your technique. So 
So, so I just I just sit. I just sit. No, don't say okay. <laughs> so the point is, you cannot let him move willy-nilly. That's the whole point of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You have to control your opponent's movement. It's much harder than scrambles, but as you go through the ranks of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that's the things you have to start to look at. It's not just sort of, here's a technique, here's a uh, half guard, a sweep. Start to string things together. Look for opportunities, whether to attack or to escape in scrambles. Taking advantage and minimizing your opponent's movement to the point where he just keeps putting himself in a bad position after bad position. But you should start to narrow the, the positions that he can do until he has no other option other than to tap, okay? And on Facebook, Adam Thompson asks, is there a follow-up if he back rolls when you step over from the crucifix? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's going to be, is it, I, who asked this question, Mike? Adam Thompson. Adam, I, I, if, you, if you're on, and, and is this what you're talking about, where he can back roll the other way? He really can't. And the re, if, if, if I'm here, he can. But if I turn, I'm basically pushing his head into his torso. So it's, he really can't back roll. I'm actually tempted to do this. This is family friendly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, while he's gotten his head to the ground. It's easy to stop. It's just easy to stop. It's very easy to stop. So I'm, I'm going there anyways. If for some reason he does, this brings us to another setup. Say goodnight, everybody. So it's actually pretty easy to stop. All you got to do is bring the foot across. You don't have to go all the way to the other hip. You can just bring it to the torso. Now, you need to make sure that any movement he does is so belabored that you got plenty of time to set up whatever submission you have for him. Does that answer your question, Adam? He said, uh, yes, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so, unless there's other questions on this particular setup, I'm going to move to the next setup, which is from the guard. Yeah? All right. The next setup from the guard is, so anytime somebody's in your guard, guys, even if he has the hands on, so I want to try to go perpendicular. So I, I want to try to strip his hands off, and I'm starting to, starting to attack with a good footing of timing. Enrique's already countering this. I'm going to switch to the other side. As I'm switching to the other side, pay attention, guys, to controlling his posture. No gi, I will try to hold his, his head. Uh, with the gi, I will actually take the grip. And now, I'm going for top lock. Okay? Now, if Enrique doesn't pull his arm out, he's arm locked, basically. This, this is going to happen. This is very easy. So, most guys will re retract their arm. So, from here, this position, I will either go into regular triangle, but most often what's going to happen, any sort of skilled guys will start to change the angle. They start to try to cut your control your hips so you really, I can't go to my left. I cannot pivot counterclockwise now. That's okay. Reverse triangle. Interestingly enough, reverse triangle guys, way more control, less choking power. But it makes his life miserable and you have plenty of time to, you can put your hand on the other karate, you can squeeze. Then you can attack Secondary. All right? So this is actually one of my very favorite submission sequences from the guard, is to attack sort of in a perpendicular fashion. Anytime, um, this is actually a good point. Um, if you're on the bottom, it doesn't matter whether you look at it from a uh, grappling, whether you look at it from a, uh, an MMA 
which to me is probably the best proxy for self-defense. So any perspective you look at it, if I'm perpendicular underneath my opponent, very difficult for him to, number one, pass my guard, but more importantly, to hit me. All right? So I, you know, I focus on this, the idea of perpendicularity quite a bit. All right? So he pops up. Come on, pop up. Pop up, pop up. I will make it difficult enough for him to withdraw his arm. That's it. Now he's mine. Can we can hit me? Can I hit him? Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's another setup for a reverse triangle. I'm a big fan of reverse triangles, guys. Big, 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 big fan. Excellent form of control, and skilled guys will give you a reverse triangle because they feel confident that you don't have a straight triangle, and by the time they realize they give you an angle for a reverse triangle, it's too late. By then, they're locked up, and it's very difficult to escape that position. Very difficult. I, I believe it's actually harder to escape a reverse triangle than it is to escape a straight triangle. The, only, the drawback of a reverse triangle is the fact that it's not as much of a compression as a straight triangle. Mike, do we have questions on this? Yes, on YouTube, uh, Yusuf asked, Hi, coach, what if the opponent stands up? We just did it. So let's look at it again. So as long as you uh, control their posture, it doesn't matter whether they stand up or they're down. Uh, when they stand up, it's you know this this is a little bit more advanced uh, to keep uh, a person standing up to keep their posture broken. With the gi, it's a little bit easier, so you can grab in, uh, in the back of the back of the collar. And nogi, uh, Enrique is not doesn't have a rash guard, so I can't show you the nogi portion, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the same. So uh, I hope that answers your question. And on Facebook, uh, Kevin Suave asked, how effective is that reverse triangle in competition? It seems like I would lose grip if he starts to struggle. Lose grip on what? He didn't reply anything as of yet. So, yeah, let's look at it in... in a <laughs> All right, so I guess we're now I battled. I, I tried to arm lock him. Just so you know, guys, Enrique is, is, is a good black belt, and he actually resisted a little bit on this one. Uh, <laughs> so are we talking from here? Like, what, is, what are his options? Is Kevin responding or no? Not yet. In MMA or in, in competition, lock up your hands. Lock up your hands. So in MMA, if he locks up his hands, I'm going to TR until his hands come apart. Now, you generally can go to an Igatami grip on this and pry it out. So you go two on one. So even if the guy clasps his hands, you should be able to go two on one, pry it out. All right, can somebody stop the torture of Enrique? No one can. <laughs> Kevin. Does that answer your question? He said, see, I'm a big guy, smaller legs. It's hard for me to get them across. Okay, okay. What I recommend is if you are a big guy, and generally speaking, you're going to compete against other big guys, I would attack more arm locks relative to triangles. Because if you're, you know, if you're like shorter and you're stockier and you're going in, a, you know, ultra heavy or super heavy divisions, you're going to go with guys that are pretty broad. So I would basically avoid triangles. However, there is sort of things where you could do a diamond. 
Stuff. AKA Tiki. AKA Husky Man Triangle. So you can finish like this. But a lot of times, if I commit to this, I'm looking more for an arm lock rather than a triangle. So as you pull it out, this becomes a very tight arm lock. But in heavier divisions, it's going to be harder to triangle people. Now, in ultra heavy divisions, a lot of times in competitions, you're going to see guys use a lot of key locks, um, Americanas and, and Kimuras. Um, so the idea of of uh, uh, turtle piece. So I took his hand away. He rolls. All right. So if I can bring my head, leg over, and even if he can cross like this, this is still going to be a tremendous sort of uh, uh, form of control. So, so like right now, I don't, I don't have a triangle, but I have a diamond. And again, to make it a controlling position for me. I'm bringing my thighs together and knees close. Now out here, it's it's easy for him to escape. But when you when you bring things together, yeah, he's going to be trying to pry your pry your legs open. But you have this arm; you got plenty of time. It buys you time to play around with this. I'm not a fan of cow hands, but you have that as well. All right. So I hope that answers that question. He said. You showed me some moves when you were in Florida with Big Chuck, and the diamond was, and the diamond was what you showed. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> and then on Instagram, Misfitted asked, "Is the Nogi application similar?" Absolutely. Those that know me know that my game is not very different between Gi and Nogi. I tend to use universal grips. What do I mean by that? Is when I'm grabbing somebody, so even though we have Gi. I will, rather than controlling the sleeve, I will occasionally go, but I try to control the wrist. Um, in this in this position, gi or no gi, I will, with the gi, I will take the grip here. If I can, this is the no gi version, this is the gi version. No gi, gi, okay? So, my game is very, very similar. Um, the the biggest, single biggest difference probably is, is in the guillotines. When the guy turtles up, when I go for him, for a guillotine, uh, because of the friction of the of the gi, it slows it down just enough for him to be able to defend. But a lot of times in the gi, I go straight into the anaconda from from the guillotine. Other than that, I probably hit as many arm locks, as many reverse inverted triangles and knee bars as I do omoplatas as I do no gi. All right. So especially my arm locks, no gi and gi, it's pretty much the same. Uh, my my execution and submission rate is probably about the same. So uh, I, I have one more setup, unless we have other questions. Yes, Mike. Yes, on YouTube, Vincent MMA Life asked, Coach, what do you do if you can't break someone's posture if you have someone in full guard? But you can always break their posture. <laughs> so, so Enrique stands up. So I have a marginal break. He stands up. Did you guys see that? Okay. So Nogi, I'm gonna to try to pull his head back. And as he's standing up, slide your butt underneath him. See how his posture starts to break down? Um, guys, that's one of the things that you need to really pay attention to at the earliest stages of your development. When to get a good guard, you need to have two elements present. One is you've got to be able to break your opponent's posture and misalign them. So as you notice that I'm breaking his posture, but I'm also starting to, as I'm sliding in, I'm starting to line up more perpendicular. Okay? So that's very important. I basically, as he's struggling up, I slide my butt from, from here to underneath him. So now as he's lifting, he's just suddenly overshot. Okay? Let's look at it one more time. This is a very important point. So he's standing up. I start to, even if I start to lose it, I just broke his posture. Now we go to top. I'm going to the whole plot of town. Say hello to my little, to my friends. 
<laughs> so guys, notice that as he was taking things away, I stayed on him. I don't let him off the hook. All right? So I started with breaking his posture, attacking the reverse triangle. He popped his head out because he's been training with me pretty much every single day for I don't know how long. Uh, so I go to a flyer and then keep, keep attacking until he has no other choice but to tap. So let's look at it one more time. So he's standing up. I slide in. As he starts, I'm already attacking. And now this is done. Now I have plenty of time to finish. Okay. Um, I had one other setup, guys. Uh, but it appears to be a lot of questions related to this lesson. So I tried to stay on this. Do we have any other questions, Mike? Uh, well, it's time. And Pilar Sheen said, greets from Munster. Where? Munster. Munster. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> working on it. Working German, on it. Mike. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> so after this is over, we're going to work, um, work on uh, Mike's German. Uh, and then... Um, what we're going to do, guys, one more thing. Maybe we start with this tomorrow. So one of my other favorite setups is for an inverted triangle. is from the guy who's passing my guard. I go for the Kami. He strips his leg, and my leg cuts through. I bring this on, and now he's in an inverted triangle. Okay. So how much time we got, Mike? We're done. So guys, again, thank you for tuning in. Episode 6, Special Antivirus Edition. Guys, we're daily, live, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, guys, stay well and stay safe. Talk to you tomorrow.